Does your older John Deere subcompact tractor sometimes have trouble getting it up? It won't do it. Well, if you've got a 55 or 70 series John Deere compact tractor that suffers from ED, elevating dysfunction, then this video could be for you. Howdy folks, welcome to Dig Drive DIY. My name is Neil, and today we've got a DIY project. We're gonna try to increase the lifting capacity of my older John Deere 755 compact tractor. This is a 1990 model, and although this tractor is 30 years old now, it still has a lot of functionality. It can pretty much do anything that the modern tractors can do. One of the drawbacks of these older machines was that they did not have a quick attach mount for the front end loader bucket. I addressed the problem of not having a quick attach in a previous video where I custom built a quick attach mount for this loader itself. One of the biggest criticisms I hear whenever people look at that quick attach added to the front of these tractors is that, oh boy, you've really added a lot of weight and you're gonna severely compromise your lifting capacity. Well, that may be true. You're adding a little bit of weight, but it's not enough to really feel it. But actually there is something you can do to kind of help out the situation. By adjusting the relief valve pressure in the tractor's hydraulic system, you can increase your lifting capacity so that we can lift a little bit more and overcome that ED situation that sometimes leaves us a little embarrassed. The relief valve is located behind this panel right here. We will be installing Shimpak part number AM875169. The Shimpak is just some little discs. Can you see those? We're gonna put those in the relief valve. It puts more pressure on the spring, thereby uh, increasing the relief valve pressure. So let's get started. The next thing you're going to want to do is remove this step. There's a bolt right here in the corner that you got to take out. Take those four out. Remove the step. There are two bolts here and here on either side underneath the inner fender behind the wheel that you need to remove to take out that center section of tin. Okay, next you'll want to remove the four bolts that are in the tunnel cover here in the center. So there's, I already got them loose. There's one two, three, and four, PTO selector knob, and the high-low range knob. Okay, get that out of there. More out of there. Kind of hooks up front here on that step. Center panel, just pulling it forward, and here's the bolts that we took out from inside the fender well. Two on this side that we took out. And that's going to expose our relief valve, actually. It'd be a good idea to establish some baseline for our pressure, so that way I know how much I'm changing it. And I'm going to do that by putting a gauge on one of the quick connect lines of the loader. Okay, I'm going to remove this couple right here that I already got loose. Take that hydraulic hose off. I bought this pressure gauge from Amazon. It was pretty cheap. It's a 3,000 pound gauge and I put a John Deere Quick Connect male connector on it and I'm just going to insert that right into the hydraulic coupler. Okay, I got about 2,000 PSI of pressure. That's exactly within spec of factory settings, so we know we have a starting point now. Let's add some shims. Five of them total, different thicknesses. I'm gonna install all five, based on what I've seen on the internet. A little compressed air and clean up around there. This is an inch and a sixteenth. I was able to just sneak it past that line right there. Okay, we've got our relief valve here. And if we pull the spring out, 
Can you see down inside of there? There's a collar inside and the shims are in the bottom of there. So, there we go, there's the collar. Make sure you keep it the same direction. I'm gonna put all the shims in the bottom. Make sure they're sitting down in there all the way. Got them all in there. In there first. There we go, no problem. Make sure you feel that it's going in there right. So you want to kind of get it with your fingers as you put it all the way down so that it doesn't get it in there. Get the spring at an awkward angle. Okay, let's test it out. Well, it's simple as that. I put one shim pack in and it increased the pressure by 500 PSI. So from what I've read online, 2500 is a good number to start with. So let's do that and see how the loader acts. So I'm going to put this back together and then let's go test it out and see what we think. Okay, let's see if the addition of that shim pack to our relief valve will enable us to pick up this piece of concrete that I wasn't able to lift before. I honestly don't know if this is going to work or not. Well, that is all it wants to do, but it did it. And I could move this around. I, I was never able to pick this up before. That is so cool. If you're gonna raise the lifting capacity a little bit, you wanna make sure that you have the proper amount of counterweight. Either some kind of three-point ballast box of some sort like this, or possibly you'd have cast iron wheel weights or fluid in the tires. Anything that could help offset that extra lifting ability. This one's really close to the tipping point of being enough weight here. I wouldn't want to lift much more than that. Well, I'm super glad that worked. And I want to address one thing that I know is going to come up right away. And that is whether or not this puts extra stress on the loading arms or the loader itself or the frame of the tractor. And yes, there are some risks associated with doing this. That's common sense. If you're going to increase the pressure over what the factory setting was, then you're taking a risk in your own hands of possibly breaking your tractor. Now what I will say about the Model 70 loader on the John Deere tractors is that they use the same loader with the same cylinder dimensions, the same loader arms on the 855 and the 955 tractors. And those machines have a higher pressure relief setting from the factory than this. So I think the loader is capable of it. And again, we didn't take it way up high. We, we increased it just enough to overcompensate for the weight of the quick attach bracket. And that's what our optimal goal was here. I would advise you to do this at your own risk. Make sure you check those pressures so you know where you're at. If you've got a 755, then don't take it up over 2,500 PSI. We know that it lifts slightly more than it did before. I have no idea how much this concrete weighs, but I know that looks like a pretty good load and I don't want to lift a whole lot more than that with this tractor and the way it's set up. So modify at your own risk. I hope that you find what works best for you. Don't take this advice as the gospel. Do your own research and Happy tractoring. Thanks for tuning in to Dig Drive DIY. I'm glad you made it here. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Consult with your mechanic if your tractor suffers from ED. It's no laughing matter.